Bitcoin, the experimental online currency, is now a global one, complete with its own and so far only ATM. The first machine has been set up in a cafe in Vancouver, where people can exchange digital money for physical cash. But though uh, you're probably asking yourself uh, exactly what are bitcoins? Well, in the simplest terms, it's just a currency, but an online one. Uh, bitcoins are stored in web wallets that are completely anonymous, lacking even your name, though transactions are public. Uh, bitcoins can be sent from one wallet to another at just the click of a button, and in most cases with no fees or delay. Uh, the system bypasses banks, middlemen and governments. What's more, bitcoins can be easily sold for any currency available. Whether that be in uh, dollars or euros, I suppose uh, the downside being that the exchange rates do tend to be fairly volatile. Finally, though, uh, where do they come from? Uh, the process is called Bitcoin mining and consists of computers running special programs to generate a steady flow of currency. Uh, Jeffrey Albert Tucker from the Foundation for e Economic Education, he calls the currency's rise simply spectacular. A year ago, this time, I thought it was insane. I mean, I thought, well, this is just another stupid te technology. You know, they come along every few days and they flame out. So I'm a fairly recent convert. The more I look into it, the more confident I'm getting that the future of the world monetary system is crypt cryptography and this kind of crypto market-based currency. It's, it's quite spectacular. And I tell you, it only, use, only takes a few times using Bitcoin to realize this is incredibly easy. It's much, much easier than credit cards. And there's no danger of fraud or identity theft or all these other things that come with the old-fashioned credit card system. It's just a superior technology. And Bitcoin exchanges and brokers have popped up all over the world. Now, even China's largest search engine now accepts payments in the digital currency. And we were also told it could well become the dominant legal tender. Really, it's formulated to be an alternative currency, and there's no reason why it can't itself become a means of a calcula calculation. So you could do your accounting in it. In fact, people do this all the time. And you can enter into the Bitcoin ecosphere and, and live a wonderful life, meaning that you can bypass government currency entirely. The U.S. is now uh, restricting what's called um, money exchange businesses. Uh, so there's so much uh, high costs associated with ATMs. It doesn't surprise me that it started in Canada rather than the U.S. The U.S. would lose out if it continues this trend towards regulating cryptocurrency. Now, it may be popular and in demand, but Bitcoin has had more than its fair share of controversy and turbulence. A money laundering concerns and shady online activities have sent its price soaring, collapsing, and then recovering all over again. Now, the latest incident saw an FBI raid on Silk Road. It's an online narcotics marketplace that dealt in Bitcoins. Uh, Mitchell Demeter, the chief Bitcoin officer at Bitcoiniax, he talked to my colleague Kevin Owen. We've got anti-money laundering policy in place where we limit users to $3,000 per day. Every transaction you make is recorded on a public ledger. Um, your name isn't attached to it, but if somebody wants to find out who was making that transaction, it can be done. Uh, the Silk Road was a perfect example of that. They ended up shutting down the Silk Road. Basically an eBay, uh, a black market eBay and uh, they actually shut that down, which is actually a very good thing for the currency as a whole, as a lot of people associated it, associated Bitcoin just directly with the, the Silk Road. And so since it's been shut down, uh, the currency did dip about 10% uh, for about 12 hours, and since then, people have realized that it's not just about the black market, and it's actually a legitimate currency, and it's actually gone up about 100% since then.